Hi friends, so today I'm going to be doing a very different video. I'm going to be doing a video on all about my horse riding story. Now unfortunately I don't have many clips to stick over this video, so I've just plopped Ralphie in front of the camera whilst he's sleeping, and I'm just going to kind of narrate it. I'll add in some photos and stuff as I go along. So the huge question everyone has been asking me is where is the horses in Hamster Horses and Cats? And this is something I've been avoiding to address because I didn't think what would happen would happen and I was hoping it would change, hence why I haven't addressed it yet. But so from very very young I've always loved animals. This is because my grandfather in Spain, he loves animals and he's always encouraged them on me since very young. Neither of my parents are at all animal lovers. Um, they like their animals, yes they like their dogs and their cats and stuff, but no one has the same passion as me apart from this one grandfather. And when I was younger I used to see him quite a bit and he'd always take me to see the horses, he'd take me down the road to see them and he always had animals around. I didn't see him very often but when he did come down he would definitely go and take me to see the horses. So since very young I'd always been interested and um, I used to be quite afraid of them to be fair. My sister was a lot more confident but I was always a bit hesitant. But I always had a fascination over them and I knew from very young that I was going to have some sort of future with them because I absolutely adored them. He stuck me on a horse, worn one of his friend's horses, so that was my first horse ride when I was about three, four maybe. Um, I'll stick the photo in. Um, I was very young then and he stuck me on a horse. I really liked it, um, but being um, in London there wasn't much opportunity to like have a field and have a horse yourself so you'd have to go to a riding school and very very expensive. We didn't have the money at, at the time at all so I had no chance of horse riding. Um, and I lived in London till I was eight so the only time I did ride was when I got it for birthday presents and I got it once off my auntie and it was the best birthday present ever, I absolutely loved it. Um, the greatest experience ever, I just loved it so much and there were helpers that were leading me around and I remember watching them and thinking I want to be doing that one day um, definitely want to do this more often but obviously I couldn't afford it, well we couldn't afford it. So then I moved to Cyprus when I was eight and um, I lived there for two years and I started horse riding in Cyprus. Um, I started it in a stables by the beach. It was quite good stables. Um, I learned my basic things there basically. I didn't do much. I was just learning on a lunge how to walk and trot and how to control the horse. They were very basic and quite just kick, whip, pull sort of thing to get them working which I wasn't too keen on. But I went with it anyway and I had about six months maybe possibly to a year there and then we decided we'd quite like to move stables because we found out one in the mountains which was even better this one was right by the beach um, which was lovely but we went up into the mountains which was about 15 minute drive and we found another one and this I really really loved um, I used to go on hacks all the time there because it was absolutely boiling and we didn't want horses going round and round in the arena um, the lady that taught me, called Ali, was absolutely amazing. She was brilliant. Really, really enjoyed my lessons with her because she was very nice. She definitely thought about the horse, which is sometimes quite hard to find in a riding school. Um, she definitely very considerate about it. And we just went for lovely um, hacks in the foresty areas because we were in the mountains. And that was really, really nice. I remember really enjoying my lessons there. Um, and I had lessons there until I moved, so that was about two years of riding in Cyprus. Um, overall the experience was very good and it definitely kept me wanting to carry on when I came back to England. So I moved back to England, but we moved back to Oxfordshire this time, so back from Cyprus to Oxfordshire. And I was really happy to move back to such a place because it was full of countryside, which I was really excited about because obviously that's perfect for horses. Once I'd settled in school and we found a house, I was allowed to go back to horse riding and I'd been a bit out of touch but I went to a riding stables and it was a riding school and it was okay, I didn't like it at all to be honest um, because it was a lot of whipping, kip kicking, jabbing in the mouth and all of that and not really learning to ride, just learning to basically be very forceful to a horse to make it do what you want 
which I really didn't like. Um, I didn't move until I broke my arm. I was cantering around and I had a hairline fracture from falling off. They weren't very controlled there, they just sort of shoved you on a horse and let you gallop around. I had a lot of confidence though then. Um, I was a very confident rider until after the fall. Not, not necessarily because the fall gave me a lack of confidence, but um, it wasn't great and I didn't really learn much there. I then moved to a different yard, um, which I liked. It was closer to me as well, and it was more of a friendly yard. I loved the lady who ran it, and I thought it was really great. The people there were okay. I guess it was very clicky and groupy, and I did struggle to fit in because I didn't know how to tack up or anything like that. I'd never been taught that. And when I moved there, she said that I could help out and stuff, which was so exciting for me because it's something I've always wanted to do. I've always been more interested in looking after the horses than actually riding them. I mean, I like riding horses, but it's definitely more the care and just being around them, which is something I prefer as a person, just because I think they're beautiful and so clever animals. And they're the sort of animals that I just love to spend time with. And I love the whole process of catching them in, feeding them, taking rugs off and doing all of that. So I definitely was really happy that I could do that. I didn't really have any friends there until one girl came um, as she moved back from Spain and she was new there as well and she didn't have any friends at the time. So we sort of joined up and made friends. Um, that's when I really enjoyed the yard. It was brilliant. We used to, I used to go up every Saturday and Sunday if I could. I wasn't allowed more than that because my mum didn't want to be a taxi driver, as she said. Um, but I, when I did go, absolutely loved it. In the summer, I even loaned a horse for a month as my birthday present. And I loved that as well. I, wrote, I loaned bubbles and we had so much fun in the summer. I was galloping down the fields. I remember we were doing racing, a bit of jumping. It was brilliant. Absolutely loved it. The best time of my life that I can remember galloping down her in the fields. It was definitely, definitely something that... I want to do someday again. She's actually now retired, I know that, but um, she was the best horse ever and I lost all my confidence and that stables helped me gain it again, especially she did. But then things started to turn to the worst and I fell out with the girls there um, for personal reasons and it just didn't really work. Um, that's when I created my channel actually. Um, I created Hamster Horses and Cats and partly why I fell out with the girls because let's just say it was something that they found very easy to tease about because I was making videos about Misty at the time and that was a laughing thing to do I guess, that was funny so that was how I lost them a lot, I didn't like being around them anymore so I kind of quit the yard and I had a break for a while. I knew that they were all going off to college so I thought once they're gone I'll go back but I guess I just want to have a little break because things weren't going great and I was quite interested in the YouTube and small animal side of it as I had Misty there so I thought I'll quit or not quit but I'll have a break from horse riding for a bit and I'll focus on other things just to have a little break. So I was right they did all go to college. Um, but I didn't quite want to go back there, I wasn't confident enough, so we tried out another stables and I didn't like it there either, I just didn't like the way they were. I may sound very fussy here, but if I'm going to horse ride, which is very, very, very expensive, I want to have horses that I feel are happy and comfortable and the instructors know what they're doing and I feel safe and comfortable because after that I went through the biggest confidence dip ever. I had no confidence and I still don't because I haven't been in a while which I'll explain later on um, but after that I had the biggest confidence dip ever, literally no confidence and I went to this new yard hoping that they could you know help me a lot and it was awful. I did not like it at all. I was just, again, once again, I don't know what these instructors saw in me, but they just, I was, the canter was something which I really struggled with. I don't know why, um, but I just never felt like I actually got it, and I always felt like I was about to fall off. They used to clearly not see anything wrong. I must have had an okay position because they never even questioned if I was quite new to it or anything because I had been riding for about five years by then and I'd only just been starting the canter 
and I guess they were like oh she knows what she's doing and they left me to it and that's where my confidence got worse and worse and as soon as they put up small jumps and stuff I freaked out even though this is something I was perfectly capable of. So I decided I didn't want to ride there either just of the way they were, the way the horses seemed and I just wasn't comfortable overall. So then I thought maybe you know this horse riding thing isn't great at the moment maybe I should have another break and this is where the perfect opportunity came. My mum has a her work she met a lady who had her own horse called Sleepy and she this lady had been brought up with horses all around her from very very young she used to just gallop the fields bareback with them she was so natural with them and she rescued this horse Sleepy who had been in a very terrible state and she brought him to be a lovely young gelding and he had never been ridden by anyone else apart from her and when my mum mentioned to her that I couldn't find a riding yard, I wasn't happy with things, she said to me that uh, she would teach me lessons. My mum said she would pay her and we could kind of do it like that, like I'd have my own private instructor and a horse that I would ride every week. Sleepy hadn't been used to any other humans on him so she said not only would it be teaching me and be great but it would be fantastic for him and that he could learn things and it would be great like that way so that was the plan I was really excited by this because I couldn't wait to start and the fact that I just had one horse I'd be on every week would be fantastic because it's something I've always wanted and she was all about building that bond and teaching your horse to ride without force and just through your body basically so this was my sort of my type of teaching. This is what I wanted. This is all positive reinforcement and something I'm very passionate about and believe in. Um, so it was definitely not the traditional riding school style, which was great because it's what I wanted. So I start. I had one lesson with her, and he. This horse was amazing. I had one lesson on him, and my confidence was already snapped up. She was brilliant. She stuck me on a lunge the first lesson and we just worked in some trucked little bit of canter, not intentionally, but he did it very nicely and I went with it and some walk and transitions and stuff like that. And um, we were doing that, she lunged me and I gained so much confidence from that. He was a challenge horse because he had a bad past so you had to be very careful with certain things you did and she had told me horror stories about him bolting off and stuff. He was never a nasty horse, just he had trust issues and only trusted her. So I was very wary about riding him but she stuck me on the lunch just to be safe. Unfortunately this horse had a problem with choking, he used to just choke on his haylage. Um, she would soak it and she'd chop it up for him and she did a very, I can't quite remember because I didn't, I only met her once but um, she did a very complex thing for him and she had a dietitian and everything and a vet to try and help with this but it was just a problem he had. When we were on holiday he had such a bad choking um, fit that he had to be put to sleep which was heartbreaking for me. I was in tears when I found out because not only was he a lovely horse I knew how much he meant to her and I was gutted that something which I'd always wanted had just been torn away so that was gutting and after that happened I kind of lost motivation to ride again um, it just wasn't great not something I wanted at all at this time um, he was a lovely horse and she was a lovely lady and I thought this was the potential this is how I wanted to be taught to be ridden and it was just gone once again so was not great at all and definitely not something that I was pleased or happy about um, really upset about it to be honest and it affected me for quite some time after about six months of this happening I said to my mum that I missed riding and every single bit of confidence had come out of me and my mum said that had been since I hadn't been going up to the yard and helping out so she wanted me to go back again as well so I went back to my old yard the first one I went to where things happened with the girls that weren't very nice and they had all left for college so it was just going to be me and new people there that I didn't know started going for lessons there and it was okay I felt like the excitement and the stuff I'd always loved had gone and bubbles had gone my lone pony 
and it was just a riding school that was just like the usual ones where I didn't once again feel like I was being taught the best and it would be nothing compared to what that lady taught me in that one lesson with Sleepy. I decided by that time that maybe horse riding wasn't right for now or the, wasn't fit because my parents couldn't afford and can't afford to um, take me more than once a week and when they did it wasn't that easy we're not loaded we don't have lots of money and lessons are 27 pounds per hour so they're very very expensive and if I wasn't enjoying them a hundred percent and if I wasn't learning then there was no point in them and I was in the same rut that I'd always been in confidence keeps dropping after I had one of my last lessons there and I nearly cried in the saddle which was awful and embarrassing I just I'm in this dip and I can't get out of it and I can't find a stables that is perfect to help me for this so I decided to make the best decision which was just to have a break from horse riding so I did turn 16 two days ago which means that now I could actually get a job which means I could pay to loan or share a horse or just pay for riding lessons, uh, just private ones if I find a good instructor somewhere or I could share or loan or get just get a job at a yard which is what I'd happily love to do but I don't know yet, I do have exams coming up so that won't be happening anytime soon but after my exams I do plan on doing something with the horses because I miss it more than anything ever a lot of people do ask about it and it's not something I really like talking about to be honest because it does get me upset because it is something I miss. Horses are a huge huge part of my life and I hate for them to just be gone like that. There is no way ever that I could just get rid of them. So thank you so so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and subscribe if you'd like to see more. I'll see you all next time. Bye!